Good evening and welcome to our fifth midweek Lenten worship service with uh, Marty Haugen's um, Holden Evening Prayer. We are delighted that you are here. You may want to pause for a moment and go to our website, uh, emmanuellutheranpv.org, to find a copy of the worship service so that you could follow along with the words. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing creation's story, shine on every land. Oh, 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your songs in our lives. Amen. And now, a monologue by Barabbas, by Bob Fry. They killed him instead of me. It should have been me they nailed up there on that cross. He took my place. He died for me. I didn't ask him to do it. I don't ask no one for no favors. Not me, not Barabbas. So why did he do it? Why did he go and let them crucify him? He didn't have to. He could have gotten off with just a warning, maybe a few lashes. He could have hightailed it out of the city and left the rough stuff to us what is used to it. He had no cause going off and getting himself killed like that. Jesus, why did you go, have to go and die in my place? Why couldn't you just leave me alone for, to face my own faith? Now, now, I can't shake free of you and your strange ways as long as I live. I should have known. Simon had told me. Yeah, oh yeah, he'd really done a number on Simon. Turned him right around in his tracks. Simon w was one of us, one of mine. You call him Simon the Zealot? That's what we were, all right. Zealots. Freedom fighters. Uh, zealous for the right. Unswerving in our op opposition to the Roman oppressors. My people had drunk from the bitter dregs of tyranny. And we had said, enough. No more. We were zealous for the righteous wrath of our God, Yahweh, to be poured out mercilessly on those who enslaved us. And we were willing to the death to be instruments of that wrath. We struggled in the secret against the villainous authority of Rome and all who supported it. We knew the day would come when we would be strong enough to rise up openly and throw off the shackles of oppression in a violent and bloody revolution. In the meantime, we started little brush fires, nipped at the flanks. The assassination of a Roman sympathizer here, a robbery there, stirring up a riot now and then to keep the Romans' army off balance. But Simon kept telling me I ought to check out this Nazarene he was following around. I said, Simon, that's what we sent you to do. You were supposed to get a line on him and report back to us. Let us know what his plans are, how much of a following he has, when and where he's likely to strike. And that wasn't what Simon reported back. Simon tried to convince us that this Jesus of Nazareth was no less than the real thing, a Messiah with a difference. He thinks you can only change the world by changing the people in it, one by one. He says, we got to start loving each other, even our enemies, Simon said. I said, Simon, that's garbage. What kind of a revolutionary spouts nonsense like that? And why haven't you slit the throat of that tax collector yet? The one that's befriended by your Jesus. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Matthew. But Simon just shook his head at what he considered my dumb confusion and said, Barabbas, you got to come with me and meet him. Listen to him. Find out for yourself what kind of an impact he has on people. I said, thanks, but no thanks. I got my own work to do. And look, I said, you can't just keep turning the other cheek when the bullies of this world knock you down. Sooner or later, you're going to run out of places for them to strike you. No, you got to pick yourself up out of the dirt and fight back. Show them you're as tough as they are so they'll go away and leave you alone. And Simon wouldn't listen to me. He was listening to a different voice than mine now. He went his way, I went mine. He went to follow his gentle Jesus, and I went to incite a bloody riot in Jerusalem right before the Passover <clears throat> and get caught and get tossed in the slammer. My trial was a quick, it was quick and to the point. That pilot, he don't beat around the bush. His soldiers announced the charges against me and the governor sat there coldly staring at my dirty rags. Guilty, he said, with all the emotion of a man flicking a dead fly off his mantle. Take him out and crucify him. Let him be a lesson to the others. <clears throat> well, I had expected it. I'd known it would come to that sooner or later. 
I was ready to die. In this dog-eat-dog world, it's, it's kill or be killed. In my case, it was both. The, uh, the flames of revolution are fueled by the blood of its martyrs. Someone else would pick up where I left off. Resistance to oppression isn't eliminated so easily. Still, I, I spent a restless night. When suddenly you're condemned to die, life takes on a different appearance. It smacks you in the face with jarring intensity. Every second becomes precious. You gulp huge mouthfuls of life like a drowning man gasping for air. You drink life in through all your senses. Sounds you never heard, smells you never noticed, now flood over you and, sit, and you savor each one. Strain to, to seize it. Make it linger in your brain. Try to stop the flow of time. Hold on to the moment eh, to no avail. They would come for me at sunrise, make me shoulder the weight of the cross piece, the, the instrument of my own death, as they marched me to the killing ground, <clears throat> drive jagged metal spikes into my wrists, ram the cross into a hole in the ground, and, and leave me hanging there in agony, laughing at me as life slowly and painfully slipped away. You don't want to think about it, but you have to, to prepare yourself for it. Sunrise came, but the soldiers didn't. An hour, then another dragged by like an eternity. The waiting, the wandering, the jarring uncertainty. Then, footsteps coming closer. A key in the latch, the heavy door being swung open. There were only two of them standing there. Not enough to escort a man to his execution. What then? Uh, more pain? More humiliation? I knew the tortures the Roman soldiers liked to dish out on condemned criminals for the sport of it. Had they come to amuse themselves at my expense? Get out, scum, said the taller of the two. Pilate says you're to go free, lucky dog. I stared in astonishment, and he answered my silent question. The governor decided to crucify somebody else in your place and appease the crowd by setting you free. Go on, get out of here. And don't let us see you in Jerusalem, or your pardon will be short-lived. Who? I mumbled as I stumbled through that open doorway. Who got it instead of me? I don't know, he said. Some fanatic or other from up in Galilee. Uh, Jesus, I think his name was. Now beat it. <laughs> Jesus, his name was. Jesus, my name. Oh, you, you didn't know that? Ironic, isn't it? Jesus, bar Joseph, called Messiah, called Son of God, was crucified instead of Jesus Barabbas, rebel. Barabbas, that means son of the Father. Figure that one out. He took my place on the cross. Of all the people in the world he could have died in place of, he had to go and die in place of me. Him and his ways of peace and love and going a second mile, and he walked my last mile with my cross tearing into his raw flesh. Why couldn't he have picked a more worthy man to stand in for? Why didn't he slip quietly out of Jerusalem and after my men and I started to riot and increased the tension among the Roman authorities tenfold? Oh God, why me? You think it's easy living with the memory of that? You think I got lucky, a lucky reprieve? That I got off scot-free and could live out the rest of my life in peace and tranquility? Ah, fat lie, you know. Every day I live, every breath I take, I have to come face to face with the fact that he died so I could live. He would said we were supposed to love our enemies instead of hating them and striving for their destruction. I and my ways were surely his enemy. He had loved me to death. Change the world by changing people. And change people by loving them, no matter what. I'm confused. I don't have it figured out. I wrestle with it night and day. That's why I'm sharing it with you. Maybe you can figure it out. He said, the greatest love you can have for somebody 
is when you give up your life on their behalf. I don't know. You figure it out. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. Yes. 
Merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, Amen. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now a final blessing. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path. So go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. Be safe, stay home.